So before we start this video, some quick words about fighting in ice hockey, because I didn't really know why it happened before I started researching this video. Fighting is technically allowed in ice hockey, but it can only be done by teams in forces. An enforcer's role is actually to intimidate other players on the opposing team. Fights are often premeditated and done tactically, but sometimes they do break out spontaneously. Even though the rules are in place to allow fights to happen, penalties are given to players who fight. I know, it's weird. With that in mind, let's talk about the salacious practice of adding fights to hockey video games, specifically those on the Mega Drive. There are a total of 15 hockey games on the system, and 11 of them feature the ability to fight. The four that do not feature fighting are the 94 and 95 editions of EA's NHL hockey games, specifically because the NHL actually asked them to be omitted as the league was trying to improve its image. Fighting returns to the games with the 96 edition. I could also find no evidence that fighting exists in either Brett Hull Hockey 95 or ESPN National Hockey Night. There is no option for fighting in the game settings or the control options, but it might be there and is simply unadvertised. I certainly couldn't find any gameplay footage of fights occurring in these titles. Right, let's get to it. First up we have the original EA Hockey game, or NHL Hockey as it's also called. The fights in the EA Hockey games are pretty straightforward fist fights, with the loser simply falling on his arse and then it's switching back to normal gameplay. Next up we have NHL PA Hockey 93, and this is where things go a little too far. This is the only EA Hockey title to also feature blood when you defeat your opponent. You can also do this if you just check a player really hard. The NHL would step in and request that fighting was removed from the next two EA Hockey titles to help improve the image of professional hockey, but this sort of thing couldn't have helped either. For NHL 96 through to 98, the fighting now returns, except now it's a little more difficult to pull off. Fighting can only occur after the first period and only between enforcers, whereas before you could just trigger it by going nuts and checking as many players as possible. Here's a fight from each of these three EA titles. The ice from Taito goes for silliness with its presentation, presenting the players as big hulking meatheads. Fights occasionally break out and they're played for laughs. Mario Lemieux Hockey from Ringler Studios obviously features the license and likeness of a big name athlete, but also makes its fights quite salacious by switching to a one-on-one -on -one fighter view when they break out. Mutant League Hockey is the coolest thing I discovered while researching this video. It's essentially EA Hockey, but the teams are made up of high fantasy monsters like orcs and skeletons. Fighting is encouraged throughout, but we also get close-up one-on-one fights as well. It's very goofy and very stupid, and I really want to own a copy now. Unfortunately, after checking eBay prices, it looks like everyone else does as well. NHL All-Star Hockey 95 was developed in-house at Sega America and also features some bizarrely feature-rich fighting where the players drop their sticks and gloves and grapple with each other. It looks eerily realistic for a game this old. Tecmo Super Hockey also features fighting, and it's similar to the EA games. It's probably some of the most tame violence in a hockey game when compared to the others. Finally, we've got Wayne Gretzky and the NHLPA All-Stars, which also likes to make a spectacle of its fighting by switching to a closer camera angle, which makes it feel more like a one-on-one -on -one fighter. The players trying to maintain their balance is very cartoony. Thank you. 